Father, we thank you. You saw my need. You really didn't have to die. But you did it for me. Thank you for the amazing grace of God. You picked us out of the Mary clay. Washed us with the blood of the Lamb. Father, we thank you. Thank you for yet another opportunity to feed the flock of God. Let your word go forth expressly. Let it accomplish that for which you have sent it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Words are not enough to thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You are the first I want to announce this to. Last year, God gave us our year of restoration. It says, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Next year will be our year of multiplication. Praise the Lord. So thank God for the bishop. I believe you are doing a great job. Amen. Thank God for your life. This morning I want to talk about whatever you mismanage, you will lose. Let's look at Genesis 1, verse number 26, until I tell you to stop. Then God said, let us make man in our image, According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Go on. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, not transgender. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and then God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed. Which is on the face of the earth. And every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. The Bible says that you are with them. And you will see the salary of the wicked. The way it will affect you will be because of your position you have in Christ. You must know your position in Christ. If it affects others, it will not affect you. Thank God for COVID. I really thank God for COVID. For three years I've not been here because it was crazy here. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we were working. 
I even believe that maybe somewhere along the line I had it. But God healed me. Praise the Lord. So if it affects others, minus you. The principal key of the kingdom, the principal key given to mankind by the king of heaven is the key that will save you in this life that you are living. Whatever you mismanage, you will lose. Beloved, hope is empty if it does not have faith. Hebrews 11, 1. It says, for without faith it is impossible to please God. They that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And in verse 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. They that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So hope is empty if he does not have faith. Beloved, the key or information you need today is management. Is what? Management. The reason why we are in trouble is because there is no management. Governments are not working properly because of greed. The first principle God gave Adam was management. The first principle God gave Adam was what? Management. God gave us dominion over the earth's resources. Not over people. He gave us dominion over the earth's resources. So the principal assignment of, the, of, of mankind is dominion over earth's resources. There are so many resources on this earth. Especially when you go to Ghana. We have a lot of gold. When the Portuguese came, they, they, they named, they first landed in Elmina. Elmina means the mine. Ghana was named the Gold Coast. <laughs> So God told him to dominate the resources. The word dominion is the responsibility to manage God's resources. Have dominion. So the divine goal of God for all of us is the extension of of the culture of heaven on this earth. As it is in heaven. You know the Lord's Prayer. Can we say it together? Ready, go. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom, thy kingdom, go on, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> you see, Heaven has so much wealth that even the streets are paved with gold. I believe if some Ghanaians go to heaven and they see the streets of gold, they'll start mining, there'll be potholes in heaven. 
Amen. So management of the kingdom resources was God's first command. Have dominion. And that means management. This morning I want to talk about management. God gave us responsibility to manage the resources of the planet. Like I said, the streets of heaven are paved with gold. That's why some will not make it to heaven. You know why? Because of greed. <laughs> I know some of you are thinking about it. Some people will not make it to heaven because of greed. When they get to heaven, even the, the gates, they'll start carrying the gates away. In heaven, people will even steal gates, carrying the pearly gates. So the stuff we go after, God uses for building. That is God's building material. Heaven is so filled with wealth. And he said, pray that that comes on this earth. There is so much resources that God has deposited on this earth. We just need to open our eyes and see them. It's like Ghana and America. You can be in Ghana and enjoy more than being in America. Hello? Oh, yeah. Recently, I was watching TV, and I saw what was happening in, uh, in Florida. Very sad. And I asked myself, why don't you guys build with blocks? Praise God. Your house is here in Ghana. It's called kiosk. <laughs> Amen. So you can have America in Ghana. You can be in Ghana eh, and have more in Ghana than in America. For instance, if you go to my office, my office is as, is as big as this hall. Just my office. Praise the Lord. If I'm here, how can I get that kind of office? But the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So in heaven, there is plenty for everybody. If you understand this divine strategy of God, you will survive. Management, management, management to work. So let's define work. It means to become. God wants you to use resources on this earth to add value to yourself. There's so much resources that can help you add value to yourself. The valuable you become, the more resources get attracted to you. If you become valuable, resources are attracted to you. Recently, we there was an additional land In Ghana, a fetish priest wanted it, and they brought sand to 
place on the land. And the moment they put the sand on the land, something has happened. Things have changed spiritually. So the moment they brought in the tipper truck, I stopped them. And I arrested the driver. Took them to the police station. So they sent for the fetish priest. When he came and he looked at me, he was shaking his head. And he said, you see, you see. To cut a long story short, within a month, the fetish priest died. I didn't kill him. <laughs> Amen. So God wants you to use resources on this earth to add value to yourself. The only way to survive this crisis is how you manage. Genesis 24. The Bible says, when the Lord, Genesis 24 from verse number 4, it says, but, but you shall go to my country and to my family. Genesis 24, 4 and 5. He says, you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. Verse 5. And the servant said to him, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I take your son back? To the land from which you came. Now, he was being sent on a mission. He was being sent on a mission. He went with an anointing. It's, it, it's an anointing that took him there. And to cut a long story short, he came back with a wife. That is God's enabling grace. This is not God's unmerited favor. This is God's enabling grace. He went in there and came back with a wife. The Bible also says that and when God made the earth and the heavens and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth. And there was no man, there was no man to work the ground. It's called management. Somebody needed to manage the ground. The earth was filled with life, but it was barren. Now, God held back the rain. He refused to let anything grow. He allowed no growth, no expansion, no development because he was looking for a manager. So God is able to, to, to prosper you right now, but he is holding it back. Why? Because he needs you to be able to manage what he has given to you. Prayer and fasting is not what, what, what God is looking for. He's not looking for singing or worship. He has enough choristers in heaven. Think about it. Amen. Oh, yeah. He had a lot of worshippers. Lucifer was there. Are, are you getting it? Yeah. The angels were worshipping him. But he needed somebody to take care of the colony, which is the earth. 
So he needed what? A manager. So God wants you to manage what he can give to you. Whatever God gives to you, he wants you to manage it. Even including your money. We'll get to that. So blessing depends on your capacity to manage. So God did not allow anything to grow because there was no manager. We need to manage our work. The work on this earth must be managed. The reason why God created man on earth, his motivation or the need he had was not to worship. God did not need a worshiper. Why? Because heaven is full of them. He needed somebody to manage. And I'm talking to some, somebody today. God wants you to be a manager. Now let's look at the power of management. Management is the primary goal for mankind. Whatever you fail to manage, you will lose it. If you fail to manage your body, you will lose your health. Is it not true? Good. If you fail to, 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 <laughs> to manage your marriage, you will lose your spouse. If you fail to manage your money, you'll be broke. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You will lose all that money. If you fail to manage your house, you go back to renting. Can I get a witness? Yeah. God does not allow any growth. Until he sees management. There are some of you right now. You can manage even your own bedroom. If I go with you after church to inspect your bedroom, you haven't laid your bed. So God's primary area of trusting you is management. He will only trust you with what you can manage. God will give only for effective. He will give for only effective management. If he sees a manager who is managing effectively, God will give you more. Amen? God will give you more. So God will give to effective management. Management attracts, it attracts resources. God knows where the secret treasures are hiding. So all you need is that you need to build a relationship with God so that God can tell you where the secret riches are hiding. A few years ago, I, I, I bought some land. <laughs> I bought some land. That is some secret riches. I bought the, the land for what? 20, 25,000 Ghana CDs. Today it is 120,000 dollars. Secret riches. It took me to a place and I saw the land. 
by the grace of God, when we started the church, I started saving money. I put it into treasury bills. And so I bought the land those days for 12 million CDs. Today we have 40 plots. One plot in that area is $70,000. So we are working on $2.4 million, just the ground we are working on. Amen. When I went to the place, it was bush. Nobody wanted the, the place. Beloved, some kind of humility is stupidity. Can I say that again? Some kind of humility is stupidity. God gave me favor with the managing director. And he said to me, you know what? Let me give you like uh, 100 plots. When I give you the 100 plots, I want you to sell like 50 to your church members so that they can surround you. I didn't think far. <laughs> Amen. Hundred plots. So if if right now seventy thousand times hundred is what? Manager, we need management. Mm. All the money. Is here. They say there's no money, but it's, 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 it's here. It's been stolen by, by greedy people. One of the things they are doing is printing money. <laughs> so as they begin to print money, it loses value. So management truly attracts resources. We are building. I love building. I, I love building. Every year I build something. Every year. <laughs> we are building a three-story school building. 15 classrooms on each floor. Three-story. So 15, 15, 15. That is 45 classrooms. It's called management. Some people, some, some pastors put their money in their pocket. Some are buying cars. Some are buying shoes. It's called management. Amen. 15, uh, uh, 15 on each floor, 45 classrooms. Praise the Lord. So by the grace of God, we have another three-story building, which is an office block. I think you saw it when you came. Just the office block. <laughs> it's all about management. I love America. I love to come and stay in America, but, but, <laughs> amen. I love you to come to Ghana, say amen. amen. All the money is still here on this earth. The greedy CEOs, greedy politicians, greedy pastors, greedy businessmen. Today, people are printing money but it has no value. If you can make it through the crisis, start managing first. Start from your bedroom, your washroom, clean your floor. Your closet must be neat. 
Am I speaking to somebody? Oh, yeah. If you want a new car, look at the old one and see how you are keeping it. Hmm. That's how I was trained at age five. When I was five years, I was sent to a boarding house. Five years. I thought my father was a wicked man. Very wicked. My mother was not there. My father was not there. You wake up at five o'clock in the morning. You lay your bed. <laughs> you go to the bathroom. You pace. You bath. After you finish, you come and stand for, you, you, you dress up and you are there for inspection. They inspect before you go and eat. That is how I was trained. So sometimes people look at me and they say, you know, they think I'm pe -pe 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 -pe. That, That's how I was trained. Until my wife sacked me from the kitchen. But those days when I go to the kitchen too, I'm every pe -pe 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 in the kitchen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So whatever you fail to manage, God will take it from you. The rain will not come anymore and you will be barren. We don't have to waste time. It's not time to waste money. It's not time to waste what? Money. Don't waste it. Materials, resources, all these things would have to be managed properly. Stop buying shoes and clothes. Save and invest. Amen? Yeah. For three years, I have not bought any suit. Praise the Lord. Take good care of it. Sometimes some of the suits I'm wearing are like five years old. Clean it nicely. Put it on. Get a new shirt. Get a new tie. And you are good to go. Say amen. amen. So manage your money. God does not work magic. What he needs is management. God will never give you What you ask for. But only what you can manage. Think about it. We ask and ask and ask and ask and ask. And we want to consume it on our own last. <laughs> so he will not give you what you ask for. But only what you can manage. Of late, I want to roof our, uh, what's the name? The school building. 45 classrooms, I'm left with a roof. And I know when God gives me the money, I'll use it for the roof. Praise the Lord. It's going to cost about 300000 just for the roof. It's a very huge building. So God will give to effective management. One reason why God is not answering your prayers is because he knows you. You are not a proper manager. The reason why he's not answering your prayers, you know that, is he look at you and say, Kai, you, even if he gives you, you, you backslide. <laughs> hey. No, listen, the, <laughs> there are people, there are people that when we started this church, okay, when we started this church, they were very humble, praise God, asking God to bless them. 
And the moment God started blessing them, you can't find them anymore. I mean it. Praise the Lord. So God will give to effective management. You want a million dollars. How many here want a million dollars? The thing is that what are you going to do with it? No, 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 I know. You, you see, for some of you, you have not even thought of what you are going to do with it. Yeah, so that's why God is not giving. Make a list and tell God that you can account for it. Praise the Lord. Want a million dollars. But you cannot pay tight on hundred. When God gives you hundred, you can't pay tight. Hmm. Let me tell you something. Eh? If you don't pay your tight, your life will be tight. Let me say it again. If you don't pay your tithe, your life will become what? Tight. You can't manage 10% of $100 and you want a million. The Lord be with you. <laughs> hey! Mercy. God will not give you what you, you, what you, you, you pray for, but what you can manage. You pray for a job. God says, okay. But he, he will ask you, the last job you were on, you went to work late. You take two hours break for lunch. You are stealing the boss's money. Can I say something? Time is currency. So when somebody is wasting your time, it's currency. For some you lied, you were sick. And you not go to work. How can God give you a new job? The other day we were talking about excuses. Let God turn your excuses to uses. You are praying for a house. But God is saying, you don't keep a clean house. You pray for a car, but you don't keep a clean car. You are not managing what God has given to you. You are not managing what you have now. How can God give you Bigger things. When it gives you bigger things, you will not be able to manage it. Sometimes you say, God, I want a spouse. But you don't even pray for yourself. Think about it. That's why I say sometimes people come to church and they have all kinds of motives. They come because they want, they want a spouse. They want to marry. Amen. Spend time to pray for yourself. Amen. God will give to management. I will give you if I can see management. The word economy 
economy, very interesting, is to maximize the minimum. That's economy. Amen. Let me say that again. Economy is to do what? Maximize the minimum. What are you doing with the little that God has given to you? In Ghana, whatever comes in is not much. But by the grace of God, we are doing something with it. The little that comes in. Today, I can go to God and tell God, God, the little you have given me, this is what I have done. Praise the Lord. You see the church here? This church. All right? I came here. Those days, I used to do galamse. You know what galamse is? Spiritual galamse. Those days, when I come here, I go and preach in other churches. Praise the Lord. I believe one day I went with, uh, I went with uh, um, Bishop. A friend told me to go and preach in his church. So they gave me 45 minutes. And then I, I, I said to her, um, why don't you preach 15 minutes? Because the guy didn't really know her. So I said, you preach 15 minutes and then I'll take the 30 minutes. The guy was not too happy. But the moment I introduced her, 50, I think she preached for like 14 minutes and she introduced me. To cut a long story short, by the time we finished, it was a Wednesday evening, they signed a check for me for $5,000. So she said, eh, at least I also preached some. <laughs> Bishop, you remember? <laughs> I didn't give you some mercy. <laughs> hey, you are here. <laughs> Take a little and make the most out of it. Our former president, I so love our former president. Amen. He did so much work with little. Go, when you land at the airport, you see that this is a nice airport. Is it not true? Those of you who have been to Ghana, yeah. Nice airport. Nicer than some of the airports in, in America. <laughs> Amen. Build hospitals, roads. A lot of interchanges. You want to be an economist. Take mango, just have a mango, and you can make a tree out of it. You plant it, praise the Lord. There are certain people that when they have seeds, they cook it and eat. But you have, you have a mango seed, plant it. At least you get like 500 mangoes on that tree. So inside those mangoes, those, those fruits, there are 500 fruits. So you take the, you eat the mango, amen, sell some of it, amen, and then replant the trees. Maximize the minimum. You can use some of the fruit for juice. Mango juice. Praise the Lord. Before you know you are exporting. It's called management. You can turn $500 into $5,000 easily. It's not magic. It's called common sense. 
It's ideas. Don't be buying and buying and buying, buying shoes, buying clothes, buying this, buying. Look, there are some of you, listen, as I'm going to Ghana, there are some of you, you have too many clothes. All right? Yeah. See, make some nice for me. I'll ship it to Ghana. We have church, we have churches where people, you know, in some, in some, in some, uh, what's it called? Some, some kind of areas that can be a blessing to the people. Praise the Lord. So then, God will take the job from you because you are not putting God first. When God gives you a job, my dear uh, Vicky, are you hearing that? Yes. Did you hear that? I love that testimony. Hallelujah. I believe that it would have, it could have come faster than that. But I believe that you wasted time somewhere. Amen. Amen. The next promotion is going to come. And it's going to come. It's going to come. But put God first. So God gave three talents to three people. One five, one two, one one. The first took five and made ten out of it. The other two made four. The other one, praise the Lord, he buried it. You know that story? Good. It's in the Bible. So God took the one and gave it to the one that had most because he wants more, not less. That is economy. When God gives you something, do the best out of it. Some governments have, have borrowed so much and done nothing with it. And we are still borrowing, especially, especially my country. We are still borrowing. There are even people that have more money than what we want to go and borrow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Maximize the minimum. Don't be buying, 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 and buying. I know where... I know where my money is. It's carefully invested. Praise the Lord. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Today when I looked at myself in the mirror, I, I realized I'm a good man. Praise the Lord. I have seven grandchildren. Seven. Amen? Seven. Some of you are looking at me like, my firstborn is 47. I'm not a small boy. My firstborn. He has three. Then Edna too has three. Daisy has one. I'm still counting. Ima and Leslie. Praise the Lord. <laughs> A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Those days when I used to come and do galamsi, I saw certain people here that were not going to church. So I, I gathered them and I said, you know something? I'll come for us to start a church. I brought money from Ghana to start a church here. I bought two cars in one week. I bought all the instruments. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Including the chairs you are sitting on. Praise God. Yeah. Normally it is America that needs to support Ghana. Praise the Lord. But I thank God for, for, for you here and thank God for Bishop and for what you guys are doing here. At least I got you to a certain stage and I left you. I'm like Mother Eagle. He 
He will go and come and feed them, feed their eaglets. Go and come and feed the eaglets. Go and come and feed the eaglets. One day he comes with nothing. And then he will hook you and put you, take you very high and leave you there. Because you have the potential to do what? Fly. Hey. So to economize means to add value to your gift. Add value to your gift. You are born with a gift. Please add value to it. To economize means to get the most out of the least. Answered prayer is regulated by your capacity to manage. If you cannot manage it, God will not give it to you. If you are praying for a business to increase, God will say, let's see what you have done now. I know when I go to God, he will give me more. Praise the Lord. Because God knows what I'll do with it. Amen. God's resources are still on this earth. And he knows where it is. But it is not, it will not come to you if you cannot manage it. Please remember, whatever you mismanage, you will lose. Some people, in good times, did not manage what God gave them. So they have become depressed. So God does not encourage waste. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. You know the story. He was teaching management. He said, listen, put the people in, in what? 50s and let them sit on the ground. Took, you know, I, I, sometimes people don't know whether it is, it is uh, how much bread and how much fish. But it is very easy for you to know. The carbohydrates are more. <laughs> Amen. So it's five, what? Loaves and two fish. Is it not true? Huh? The carbohydrate. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So he had them sit in 50s so they can be organized. He broke the bread and he gave it to them to eat. But the most important part was the end. He said, pick up every crumb and bring it to me. There is something about crumbs. Don't throw them away. Praise God. When we built our church many years ago in 19, uh, what, 1999, bought a lot of roofing sheets, a lot of gravel, a lot of sand, a lot of, you know. When we finished, the crumbs that were left, I used it to build a four-bedroom house. All right? In eight weeks. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, don't worry about the time today. I am here. You know, when Bishop comes to Ghana, she doesn't look at time. So today, let me preach. Are you being blessed? Yeah. Spend your money on something you need not on something you want. Married people, don't put pressure on your spouse. If you can't afford something now, don't do it. God hates waste. Psalm 115, verse 
15. Let's look at that quickly. Psalm 115, verse 15. May you be blessed by the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. Is for who? But the earth he has given to the children of all men. So the earth is his colony. We said the Lord's Prayer, is that correct? Our Father, who art in heaven, who art where? He's in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Yes? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in heaven, there is proper management. So he says the, 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 the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man, that's called delegation. It's called what? Delegation. Now, listen. I am at the headquarters in Ghana. But Bishop is here with, with you in the U.S. Is that correct? I'm bringing it down to the earth so you can understand me. I am where? At the headquarters. In heaven. Our headquarters is where? Heaven. The earth is a colony. So right now, I'm at the headquarters in Accra. And this place is a colony. That is delegation. Earth is man's legal authority. Man was given dominion over the earth's resources, not over mankind. Please remember, God did not give you ownership. He gave you rulership. God did not give you what? Ownership. He gave you what? Rulership. Don't confuse rulership with ownership. If you have rulership over something, but not ownership over that thing, you become a manager. Your title is what? A manager. Hello? Hello? So you see Bishop? She's a manager. Mercy. <laughs> Amen. The other, the other day when she, she was calling me her boss, her boss, this is my boss. Amen. Yeah. She has rulership. Praise the Lord. So what is a manager? Management is the effective, efficient, correct, and timely use of another man's property and resources for the purpose for which they are delegated with a view to producing the expected added value. Let me say that again. Management is the effective, efficient, correct, and timely use of another person's property and resources for the purpose for which they are delegated with a view to producing the expected added value. Management is never owning your own property. You don't own the earth. You don't own the job where you are working. Those of you that are working at the World Bank, do you own the World Bank? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We are all managers. I'm a manager of Christ Foundation International. Who owns it? God. I'm only what? A ruler. Listen carefully. When we manage 
when we mismanage, we lose. God will make sure he takes it from you. For almost 25 years, I've been managing Christ Foundation. Amen. 25 years. I served under somebody for, for 18 years. Praise the Lord. 18 years. I served faithfully. When I was 24, I decided to leave the things of the world. So for 43 years, I've been doing this work. For some of you, ask yourself, how old were you 43 years ago? Mercy. <laughs> some of you were not even born. Hallelujah. Listen, let me stop. Uh, what, how much time do I have? I don't have time. Okay. I have, I have time. It's good that we, we catch this. Amen. It's good that we catch it. Decide what you are going to do with your resources. Otherwise, your money will become less. Why? Because the value is falling. The value is doing what? It's falling. Whatever you spend your money on should be something you need, not something you want. Management protects, otherwise you will lose it. Well, we'll continue.